everybody, Jen here and welcome back to the Jen Siri YouTube channel. I'm in a slightly different part of the kitchen today because I've got this beautiful white umbrella next to me and I'm going to talk you through a few tips and tricks about how to use this in your setting or at home with your child as well as a few lovely little cheap bits that you can use alongside it. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and we'll get cracking. Now if you follow Jen to me already it will come as no surprise to you how much of a fan I am of umbrellas generally purely because of how portable they are, you can just pop them up wherever you like in your classroom. So wherever the light is perfect, wherever your learner is, you know, if you don't want to physically move your learner because you think that might disrupt the flow of what they're doing, you can bring them to them. And the best thing about them is that they just contain the space down a little bit. Sometimes we forget how much of a sensory overloading environment a classroom can be. Or even if you're working with a child or learner in a home environment, we forget how much much auditory clutter, how much visual clutter, how many things might just distract them from that real focused learning and it just creates that lovely little nook around them that just makes everything a little bit closer and just stops that overwhelm. So I'm a huge fan of them anyway but there are distinct differences in which kind of umbrellas you use for which activities and as you can see I've got a white one here so I'm going to talk to you today specifically about how you can use white things and white umbrellas to create really lovely visual opportunities for learning. So first and foremost, I just want to tell you a little bit about the umbrella itself. This is a Mike Ayres design umbrella, and I love them because they are specifically designed for projection. So this isn't actually an umbrella that you necessarily would take out in the rain. This is purely for projection purposes. And the Mike Ayres design ones are really, really durable. So if you've got learners that you think would grab onto umbrellas when they're up, then I highly recommend this design. That being said, you can get cheaper ones on Amazon, so if you're looking to get lots of them, um, or you may be on a really tight budget, you can get cheaper white projection brollies um, on there. But as I say, if you're going for durability, if you're going for one that you know is gonna last um, and withstand the grabbing, then go for the Mike Ayers design. The other great thing about these Mike Ayers ones as well is that they have a ball at the top of them, and that actually makes hanging things over the top of them a lot easier. It essentially gives you like a little hook. Um, so again, that's just a really nice sort of happy coincidence of using these umbrellas. Okay, so white umbrellas. Automatically we're thinking when we're using white umbrellas about projection. This is called a projection brolly. And you can get some brilliant projectors that will shine on this and show up. So you're gonna get that real lovely clarity of light, clarity of image um, and high contrast stuff. So if you're thinking, actually I want to kind of see how my learner kind of looks at light, then go down a black umbrella kind of route. So those lovely flashing lights that you can get, go down a black route. But if you're looking at projection, if you're looking at contrast, like real high contrast, really, really being able to kind of focus in on what's happening above them, then white umbrellas are really your go-to. So just have a think. It's always worth kind of contemplating what you're actually doing, what you're looking for. Um, do you want to create a dark space or do you want to create something that's going to, you know, inspire your learner to kind of look for things um, and look about where things are coming from and increase that visual field. So yeah, today we're going to focus in on a few ways that we can do that with this brolly. Now, an into the wild kind of safari theme would not be complete without a camo net. You can buy camouflage netting on Amazon super, super cheaply in loads of different sizes. It's got a really nice smell to it on its own, which kind of makes me feel really outdoorsy for some reason. Um, but yeah, they are so great. And the best thing about them is that they take no time to set up and you've got yourself a really interesting kind of pattern already on them. So you can pop up your umbrella and then you can literally just drape this over the top like that. And like I said, you've got that really, really nice little ball that you can hook your netting over the top of just to stop it falling off, which is great. And automatically you are gonna get such a cool effect on the other side that it's just gonna be a really, really nice automatic visual stimulating kind of environment for your learner without having to do anything. So at this point, I just wanna mention about multi-sensory learning and particularly the multi part of that. Sometimes we get really, really focused in on creating lots and lots of lovely multi-sensory opportunities for our learners 
all at the same time because to us it looks like a really lovely multi-sensory wonderland environment so we put the lights on we project something on it we put something over the top of it we hang things from it you know umbrellas are brilliant brilliant resources for hanging stuff off but sometimes when we do all of these things together our learner gets a little bit overloaded, our learner can't really process all of what's happening at the same time, and fundamentally for us, we need to ask ourselves that question that goes, okay, hang on, what am I actually looking for here? Because it becomes really difficult to assess what it is they're actually responding to if you've got things dangling, you've got things over the top, you've got light on it, and you've got a projector wall at the same time. It might be lovely and it might visually look really quite appealing, but fundamentally, how are you going to know the difference between what they're actually responding to? So I'd say think about what you're trying to create, what you're going to use it for, and whether you actually want to see specific things from your learner, because it's going to be really difficult to focus in on those things for them and for you as an observer if you've got everything going in at once. So it might be that the umbrella on its own with the camo net is all you need because sometimes the more simplistic the activity is, the better the results. So what I've done with camo netting in the past for some of my learners is my learners would be lying underneath or sat underneath and I've just uncovered it and put it back and then covered it and put it back and just watch for their reaction. You know, what are they showing me? Do they show me that they're anticipating that it's gonna come back? Obviously, you've got a bit of auditory stimulation there going on as well. So if you've got a really auditory motivated learner, you can shake it on top um, and it's gonna create a really nice visual and auditory effect on the bottom. But it's simple, we're not adding in anything else other than the camo net and that. And you can just focus in on that for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, just starting and stopping, seeing what they're responding to, seeing what they like. Um, it's really, really nice to kind of just move it really slowly as well. Um, if you've got learners that really just like that visual stimulation alone, you know, don't kind of go crazy with it if actually they're really just focusing in on the shadows and the effects that are made by that. Um, so again, it's about reading your learner, seeing what they're responding to. But when you're just using that and that alone, you can really, really see exactly what it is that they're looking for. They can begin to show you those lovely anticipation responses. And yeah, you've got two resources. How simple is that as an activity to set up? The other thing I just quickly want to show you is this really fantastic LED floodlight. I got it from Amazon, it's 40 watt, um, it's called an IP66, I don't know the exact name of it, um, sorry guys. But it, I was looking at the time for one that had a remote control with it, so I could use it in sensory stories and change the colours to kind of evoke different moods and stuff. And it just does the job, it's absolutely brilliant. It floods the whole kind of ceiling or room with um, really lovely colours real multitude of different colours that you can go through with it, soft fades you can have on it, you can have flashing, you can have so many different shades of different colours, but it's fantastic and you can use it alongside the umbrella to completely illuminate it and change the colour of it. You can decide whether you want to use that with the camo netting or not, again it's about knowing your learner, some of my learners I know would possibly find that a little bit too much and again it would be hard for me to kind of know whether they were reacting to colour changing light or whether they were reacting to you know the light going on and off or whether they were looking at the movement and the shadows of the net so perhaps if you were using the camo netting still you could use the light because you know you're going to get a really lovely visual effect from the net being still but you know then that they're focusing in on the light but i'd say either use the light or move the camo don't move the camo and change the lighting at the same time it's going to be a little bit of an overwhelm um, but yeah this is really really cool so i'm just going to show you the beautiful effects that you can get with this now on the umbrella um, and then we're pretty much done for today Just before I go as well, I know some of you will be thinking, how much is it, Jen? I think this was about 30 quid, guys. So really, we're not talking a huge amount of money here. Um, they might be a little bit more expensive now. I did get it a little while back. But yeah, I would really, really recommend it. And having that option, like I say, to use a remote control 
is worth its weight in gold and really, really frees you up to create more magical, lovely sensory opportunities without your learner really even knowing because you just have this in your back pocket and just kind of change it as you're going through a story. Um, and it just gives another little dimension to your story, another little wow, um, and is a brilliant resource to use alongside an umbrella. So there we have it guys, white umbrella plus two very simple little ideas to use alongside it that take no time at all to set up. As I've mentioned before in some of my videos, particularly using umbrellas before, you can make multi-sensory worlds with umbrellas and I'm not saying for a second to not do that, you know, have those ones where the children can grab things, you know, that it can, you can make it dark, you can hang scarves off it for them to grab. What I would just say with that is yes, you can make it multi-sensory, but when you're really, really focusing in, on it and when you're really focusing in on a skill really really ask yourself do I need to strip this back a little bit so that I can really focus in on the learner and that's really the mantra of today's video really make those multi-sensory environments but know what you're looking for and make sure that you're tweaking that to suit your learner if your learner's role play ready for example you can have loads of stuff under there that's going to support that because they're at that developmental stage where they can explore and use it in that capacity but if you're looking at a really kind of sensory kind of style of learning and your learner is at that really early developmental level where they're just working out where their senses are and what they do really really challenge what you're setting up um, and what it is exactly that you're looking for so that's really the mantra from today's video so that's me done as I mentioned earlier if you liked the video today give it a thumbs up down below and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so share the video around and spread the word about Gen Suisse so that lots more learners can get these ideas in their life I'll see you next time for another video in the Into the Wild theme, but until then everybody, take care and have a really good week ahead.